So, first of all, uh, I apologize if this video doesn't have, like, too much energy to it. Uh, I'm actually recording this at 2am, and I've just finished another very large grind on the game. I've been in a fantastic state with playing RuneScape recently. I've been putting in some pretty crazy hours, because I haven't been too busy in real life. And I've really had a good focus on what I've wanted to do, the time that I want to get it done by, and I've really managed to maintain everything that I'm actually ahead of my schedule by over 24 hours, and I actually timed how long this is going to take me working off potentially as fast as the best, the fastest rates I could possibly do in game while playing 12 hours a day. Yeah, somehow I've managed to actually put myself around two days ahead of schedule, which is nice. Now this video, I'm actually recording it, I mean, sorry, uploading it a tiny bit earlier. I was planning to finish off some range, but I've just finished it and I'm about to go to bed. I thought, you know what? I'll get this video done. I'll get it uploaded and it gives you an update of what I've been doing in the past four days of RuneScape. So most of the clips you're gonna see in the background are basically recorded footage of what I have actually done over the past I would say four days, but in this time, I'd probably be saying around 55 hours of time. I've played a lot of RuneScape. And normally this happens when I find myself enjoying the game a lot and really focused on my grinds. This always happens whenever I find myself a grind that I enjoy. When I did Boaties Maxcape, um, that's skilling all day. And luckily for me, I actually found an enjoyment in skilling in the game. And skilling is probably one of my favorite things to do, which I know Probably sucks for you guys to hear because you're all waiting for the uh, PK videos um, on the channel and here I am glass blowing orbs in the background for extremely low experience rates, basically almost rivaling agility uh, experience power. It's incredibly slow, but on an Iron Man or a hardcore Iron Man or an ultimate Iron Man even, it is actually the fastest or the, yeah, overall the fastest experience in the game if you do not include, which obviously I don't, collecting the resources of course like normally on peckish whale i think i made something close to thirty thousand air battle staves on that account it took a while because when you actually do that you have to collect the sand the seaweed you have to collect the astral runes use the super glass make spell make the orbs runecraft the cosmic runes enchant the orbs buy the battle staves and that is a nightmare because i did this before achievement diaries properly existed like most of my early game peckish whale i did purely from the stores again at the time the iron man mode actually didn't exist so the stores weren't too competitive because not many people did i mean i was getting every world five battle staves every world 10 seaweed every world was 10 soda ash you know i did that a long time ago it's changed a lot. There's a lot of Iron Men out there now, and there's a lot of competition for every resource in the game. That People just try and think outside the box of the best ways to do things. If you nowadays want to actually take the route of doing the battle staves to make money, the only reason, again, that you shouldn't really do that nowadays is because how Slayer has changed so much over the game that Slayer now funds basically everything I believe you need on an Iron Man. When I did Peckish Whale, I got to, I think it's 96 Slayer, and Cerberus only released around the time of, I mean, this is before the tasks got buffed, so main, the main money now comes from Gargoyles, Necreoles, anything that drops Alks, and then again, when I was doing it, there wasn't any of these resource drops, you have a Kurask task, it sorts you Limpworts, Whiteberry Seeds, tons of herbs, tons of herb seeds, all of that stuff, that didn't exist when I did it on Peckish Whale. It was a completely different grind. And luckily I'm adapting quite quickly to playing on this account because this one is a lot easier to play. It's less of a challenge, but at the same time, the whole fact that it's an official hardcore Iron Man and I'm on these high scores that everybody else is and I have the whole one life, which obviously I haven't really risked much when skilling, it's really enjoyable. Even though the challenge isn't much there, like doing all the grind I did on Peckish Whale, when I moved to this account, most of this is quite easy. You might think that glass blowing uh, to chart a boat for like 12 hours a day is probably the most mind-numbingly boring thing that you've ever heard of. It really is. It's it's not the best business, I'll be honest, but the, the motivation just to get things done as fast as I can is really there right now, and it's been good because I got that last... Like the thing with YouTube and me is... When I upload one video, I want to upload another one, but I just need to do it first. This video took me 50 hours, and I've uploaded it, I think, four days later. Something like 12 hours a day I've played. There's a lot of, a lot of time went into this video. Content-wise, obviously it sucks, but it's a progress video, so that's all that we need. But um, we managed to finish off 87 crafting very quick. I got this two days in advance to what I expected because I put some serious hours in, and I really focused, and I just went for it. And I was even competing for these uh, charter boats 
on the weekend, which was a nightmare, but I still managed to do it. And that was really nice. 87 crafting, I did mention in the last video, but if you didn't catch that video, uh, 87 crafting is five levels short of 92, which allows me to create a necklace of anguish, which is the best range necklace in the game. Um, at 87, I have a plus five boost with the Wily Cat, the Behemoths in the Evil Dave um, cellar area. And then I make the Necklace of Anguish, which I'll be working on in the next video. And once I've got that, it is the best in slot anytime I want to do anything range related. To an extent, I haven't done proper calculations of where a Fiori might be better because of the defense bonuses. But again, that's something I'll work out in due time. I might read some comments and the answers might be there for me. But overall, I wanted to try and get this thing before I went to Commander Zillana because it's just a gold I wanted to go for and it's been one that I've actually enjoyed so far. But I finished 87 crafting. With that, I actually managed to just grab a plus three boost quickly as well. We made the Amulet of Fiori, so now I've upgraded from an Amulet of Glory to a Fiori, which is always a super nice thing to do on an Iron Man, especially when it's DIY. That's always a good. So now, um... My account actually looks quite decent. I, If I actually wanted to wear, I guess, some Fashion Scape or some, quotation, decent gear, I've got Barrow's gear, Dragon Square Shield, Amulet of Fiori. It's obviously not top tier, but it is that mid tier where you're at like the peak of the mid tier. The only thing I can really do now is to upgrade that all to a Torture, Bandos Armor, maybe a Dragon Fire Shield. That's all going to come as long as I don't die on the hardcore and lose the status anytime soon. So... Tomorrow, I will be going to do some gorillas. Uh, I need to get the Zenite shard, of course, for the Zenite ne uh, brace and um, um, necklace, sorry. So there's a chance I can die there. Gorillas are actually going to be the toughest challenge that I actually fight on the Hawk Ram. Again, I don't think gorillas are difficult, but of everything I fought, Barrows isn't hard in the slightest. There's, there's honestly no chance of death there unless you get insanely unlucky opening a door and getting hit by two at the same time. Very rare. Does happen to some people, though. Didn't happen to me, luckily. I'm not actually finished with Barrows. I do need to go back. Uh, but Gorillas, again, as long as you pay attention, I think they're fine. But they do hit very, very hard. And honestly, you, you throw your attention a bit. You can... I died a lot when I was killing those on Boaty. When I actually finished the quest when it first came out. But I guess there was a learning one there. And you always got to take that risk where you have the 50-50 chance for the mage attack or the range attack. You pray range, it'll mage you. You pray mage, it'll range you. That's just how it goes. And you always die. On this account, I'm going to play safe. I lose, I don't know. I don't really have the best food in the bank. I think I've got monkfish. So I lose 16 hit points. I'm probably just going to eat a monkfish. You know, you get the prayers correct. They're dead easy to read. Put the prayer up. I'm not going to take any damage. So if I lose 16 hit points from one of those 50-50 attacks or the initial attack when you when you um, aggro the monster, just reheal. Get the health up there. If I disconnect, maybe best chance of survival. Hopefully, I'll be there. But before I wanted to go gorillas, uh, I did want to finish off uh, some final gear. Um... To actually make them a bit more efficient. I don't know how many I'm going to kill per hour. But the Zenite Shard is the only RNG goal I've got in this Zillianna Grind. I think I started it on something like the 20... It was like the 22nd of July. I said, right, I want to do this, 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 this before the 3rd of August. And to do all of that, I calculated I've got to play a, a minimum of like 11 hours a day efficiently. And so far, I'm two days ahead of schedule. So I put some crazy hours in, like I said, and it's been going well. But I wanted to finish off some Void as well. Obviously, I did the hard Western Province Diary to get the chins to 99 Hunter. So I get Void Elite with that as well. And I think if I chin in Void, definitely the best uh, thing. So it's a pest control today. And luckily, they've increased the veteran boat now to five pest control points rather than four. So you actually have a 25% faster Void, which is really nice. Because of the anti-leech thing they've added as well, it's actually very rare to lose games. I think over the 14 or so hours it took me to get all the pieces... I lost, I think, maybe three to six games. Single figures. It was barely any. It was 90% win rate the whole time because everyone's actually doing something. So it's actually great. Uh, but yeah, I bought the... Um, I got the Void Bottoms first and then I upgraded those immediately. The same with the top. I always get the expensive piece out the way first because it just seems to be a better mindset when you've only got to grind an extra one hour to get the last item rather than three hours. Doesn't make a difference in the long term. Getting everything will take you the same amount of time with pest control. I just feel getting the expensive items out of the way first is always a great thing to do. But I finished all of that up. And now I have both the Void Range Elite and I have a melee helm as well, which will come in handy for gorillas as there are many, well, very minimal switch. I don't have them as a Slayer task, but I will actually have the Void bonuses as I kill them. On top of that, I'm using a Carol's Crossbow, which I just realized I don't actually own. Great, this is not going to go well tomorrow. I don't know what weapon I'm using now. Probably a crystal bow or something. That is honest. I can't believe I just realized I don't own a Carol's crossbow on the account. That's fine. Over to that, arc light. So my melee side will be extremely strong. I'll use a crystal bow for range unless it's absolutely terrible. Then maybe a rune crossbow, but I'd really not like to use that weapon. It's not very good. 
But before I do all that, I will be chinning my range up to around 90, just so I have a bit more DPS on the range side of things. Then I get the Zenite, create the Necklace of Anguish, go to the uh, back to the caves, and we chin 99 range, and we are done and prepared for Zilliana. And that is the final goal there done. I won't be starting till Zilliana until around mid-August, though, because I have qualified for the 1v1 tournament, and I will be practicing tribriding, and there will be some videos of that up on YouTube. But until then, the main grind is almost completed. So hopefully you enjoyed. See you all later tomorrow if I don't die, and we'll see how things go.